guys. Welcome to today's reading. This one is all about will you be successful? So are you going to find success and what is that going to look like? We're going to be getting into all of it. And today we have a selection of toy vegetables for you to choose from. I'm going to show you what each of them look like up close. But first, let me show you the numbers on each of the piles. This is pile one, pile two, pile three, and pile number four. I also want to mention that if you like how I read tarot and you want to get access to more of my readings, you can find them over on my Patreon. I just posted a reading all about surprises happening for you in 2024. And before that, about your gifts and talent that you were born with. Before that, I posted one about their 18 plus late night thoughts of you. So there's lots of content to choose from over on Patreon. Patreon, over 75 exclusive readings you'll only get access to over there. You also get early and ad-free access to all my YouTube videos. So if that sounds good to you and you want to sign up, head to the link underneath the timestamps and the comments and the description for my Patreon. So let me show you what each of these vegetables look like up close. So this is pile number one nice and orange just like a real carrot then we have pile two and this is a green pepper pile three this is a red onion and pile number four this is an ear of corn I also want to mention that I do do private readings. So if there's something you need clarity on in your life that you want a personal private reading about, whether it's just an energy check-in, a mediumship session, an astrology reading, or a tarot pull, you can get all of those at my website, briarrosetarot.com and you can book a one-on-one -on -one session with me. So the link for that is in my description for briarrosetarot.com if you want to book a slot with me. So thanks so much for watching guys. Now if you need more time to decide you can totally feel free to rewind, pause, and take as much time as you need but we're going to go ahead and jump into pile one. Hey pile one, welcome to your reading. So if you guys picked this carrot, this is going to be your reading. This actually peels apart, but it's pretty plain and basic in the middle, just like a real carrot is just kind of orange inside. So I'm not going to show you the middle, but that's what it looks like up close. Cute little toy, but let's get into your cards. So you guys got Angel of Strength, second chakra archangel ariel door to spirit and walking away so it's very interesting that you got the second chakra archangel ariel there is some message for some of you guys that you're gonna have to go through some stuff before you get the success it's not necessarily going to come easily to you the way it does to everyone else so how you're going to know you're on the right track is even when you're in that energy where it feels like things are going against you or where it feels like nothing is working out or where it feels like things aren't going your way. This is actually a hugely powerful part of the journey you're on because I feel like for a lot of you guys, part of this journey to success is earning it. It's getting through it. You know, um, I mentioned this before, but there's a TikTok channel where they give away free bottles of water. And I always think it's so funny how when they give away the free bottles of water, people are always questioning. They're always like, why would I want this water? What did you put in the water? No one is valuing it because it's free and it was given away. But when you buy something, when you agree to purchase it for $2 or a dollar, whatever, you know it's worth and you know it's value. And it's almost like there's a message for you where as much as you may complain about um, the hardships you're going through, one day you're going to look back and be like, wow, 
that was such an amazing time and I learned so much from it. There's a quote, I think, by Freud, and I love it. And I could be wrong about it being Freud, but I think it is. And he says, in retrospect, the days of struggle were the most beautiful. And I honestly think that's so true. Like, it's funny when you listen to a very um, successful actor or a movie star or a billionaire, and they'll say, you know, they'll ask them, what was the happiest time in your life? And they'll say, when I was 20 and I was broke and I was living on the beach in my van or when I was, you know, in my 30s and I had just started the company and I didn't know if it was going to succeed. So I know there's a part of us that's going to say, well, that's easy for them to say they have millions of dollars now. But I honestly think a lot of you guys are on that track. You're on that journey to achieving something really amazing. And yes, I do see you reaching success. But I also feel like it is going to come after a time of struggle. And of sometimes when you say this, you get a little pushback. People can get frustrated or they'll say, you know, you shouldn't tell people that success comes through struggle. But the reality is, is that success can come through in a variety of different ways. For some people, it comes through really easily. It just comes through, you know, with luck and ease and not having to work. But for a lot of people, success does come through a little bit of disappointment at first, pushing through against it, continuing to prove yourself to the universe. And I feel like there's a message for you of, first of all, leaving something in the past, deciding to leave something behind, possibly cutting out certain people from your life. And that's going to be, again, how you're going to know you're on track. I'm hearing let go. So there's almost like a need to purge or remove before the success can come in. For some of you guys, you may have been surrounded by unsupportive people, be it family members or friends, but it's almost like there's a need to clear it all out and then we can build fresh. Um, and I feel like that is a bit of a painful process. For some of you guys, you are going to be clinging on to like, I don't want to let go of this. Why does this have to leave my life? This is really hard. This is really sad. But this is actually going to take you to your destination. And when you're in that energy where you feel like you've let go of so much and you've given everything and why is it still not happening? That's how you'll know you're right around the corner from the success. Um, because some of you guys are at turning points in your life right now, um, or you're going to be at a turning point in your life. And I feel like the purging and the releasing is a really important and key part of this. So I also want to talk about the second chakra, Archangel Ariel. Um, it's interesting because Ariel is an angel that really helps with nature, the environment. And then the second chakra is a chakra that helps with creativity. It's also related to our um, sexuality a little bit. But one thing they both have in common is they both rule bodies of water and relate to bodies of water. And when I think about the element of water, I think about flow and I think about going with the flow. And Bruce Lee, the famous fighter, said, be like water when it came to fighting because that's sometimes the best thing you can do. We think of fighters as like they should be hard, they should be tough, but he's maybe one of the most famous writers of all time and he said the best way to be a good fighter and to succeed is to be like water to flow to allow it to take you where you want to go and I feel like for you guys there's a message that your success isn't going to come in just a linear way that makes sense or is so obvious from the outside of what's happening you know sometimes people follow a success track that's really obvious and logical. They go to high school and they do well, and then they go to a top college, and then they go to law school, and then they get a good big law job, and you know, they rise up through the company, and you can really track like what's happening. But I feel like for you, there may be setbacks. There may be times when people are like, what are you doing? Or 
you're switching careers at 40? What? That makes no sense. Um, there's almost like a need for you to flow, to go with the flow, to trust your process. And I almost feel like for some of you guys, there's a message or a reminder that you chose this on the other side because maybe you in pile one are more ascended souls. And so you chose a more challenging life course. You chose to take a lesson where success is not just handed to you at the drop of a hat, but where it's earned and it's, you know, taken and it's, um, it's worked for every step of the way. Um, and I feel like that's going to make it taste so much sweeter. Like spirit just showed me in my mind, the image of a pie and why I think spirit is showing me that is I remember the first time I ever baked a pie. I liked to cook as a kid and I loved to bake and everything. So I finally opened Martha Stewart's book, uh, her recipe book entertaining um i made her apple pie and i'd had apple pie many times my mom would get it from the store but this was the first time i made it from scratch and i was shocked at how much butter how much sugar and how much work went into making a pie anyone who's made a homemade dessert you can probably relate to like they use this much butter in it and this much oil and this much sugar but I was also amazed by how much work it was, rolling out the dough, braiding it into the crust, um, all the details that need to take place to make the crust rise correctly or not rise, but, you know, be a flaky, buttery crust. Um, it's so interesting because nothing tasted better than that apple pie when I finally had it finished, when I finally had cut all the apples and, you know, cored them and sliced them into place and peeled them and then, you know, coated them with lemon juice and then sugar and then made the crust. It was so much work, but nothing tasted better than that apple pie. And all the pies that I've eaten in my life, most of which, you know, have been store-bought, I couldn't remember a single detail about any of them. And there's that message that the thing you're building, pile one, it's going to be that much sweeter. It's going to be amazing because you did put the work in and because you had to push yourself a little bit. Let's get into some tarot though. So we got the king of cups, nine of wands, three of cups, page of swords, king of wands, and the death card. So a lot to say from this tarot um, with the death card. Again, confirmation that there may be some kind of reinvention, pivoting, some kind of totally different type of life that you're living when success comes in, a pivot in your personality, becoming a different person, transforming a little bit that is going to bring this success to you. Um, it's like, you're going to have to let go of the old version of you in order to welcome in the success you want. You're going to have to transmute that. You're going to have to move past it. Um, and I also feel like with the King of Cups and the second chakra Archangel Ariel card, because Ariel or sorry, the second chakra is also very creative. There is a vibe that some of you guys may get success through your creativity, also possibly through psychic abilities. And it doesn't have to necessarily mean you become a psychic, but you maybe are listening to your intuition. Like I always bring up how JK Rowling got her entire idea for Harry Potter one day in a cafe. She just suddenly had the whole idea come to her. To me, that's an Ace of Cups moment, um, an Ace of Swords moment. It's a moment of genius and it's divinely given. And she could have blotted that out and ignored it, but she listened to her intuition to write this story. And so, you know, a lot of people who make inventions or start a company, they'll say, it just came to me or it just, I just had a feeling that I should look into this technology and I, I just had a feeling about it. I just had a feeling I should switch career paths. I feel like how you guys reach success is going to be through something like that. You're going to have success that comes to you in a way that, again, may not be super logical or obvious to everyone else, but you hear the inner calling and you have that inner voice. It also could be through using your creativity. We also got the Page of Swords, so it could also be through communication in some fields, writing of some kind, or um, 
or painting or anything that speaking, anything that involves communication at all could definitely be how you guys reach success. I almost feel like it could be something where whatever you do, it will have a creative spin to it. So even if you were to start a technology company, you know, kind of like how Steve Jobs, he he presided over Apple, which is technically just a technology, like a laptop company, right? But he is a Pisces, and in typical Pisces form, he cared very much about the aesthetics, the feeling of it, Pisces being a highly intuitive sign. He really drove home that they had to make the products beautiful and pretty to look at, and really revolutionized how cell phones looked, how laptops looked, how computers looked, and still to this day, Apple has a very singular look and design style Style, even though they haven't even reinvented it since Steve Jobs died like 10 years ago, but still he was so futuristic that nothing has come close or nothing has replaced how cool Apple products look to this day. So there's something to be said for when you use your intuition and you use that kind of um, psychic ability to tune in and whatever you do I feel like you'll use an aspect of that you'll make it creative you'll make it aesthetically driven you won't just have it be only facts and numbers because I do feel like some of you guys not to say you couldn't be good at numbers but I feel like a lot of you guys are deep thinkers you're more creative um and you have a real interest in things like that. I also feel like Spirit is sending me a message about you guys reaching success via relationships. So I feel like um, some of you guys, when you're earlier in life, relationships may have may be difficult for you. You may have a hard time in relationships or maintaining relationships. Um, some of you guys may not have a lot of relationships when you're younger and maybe you even think that well that's just who I am I'm never really going to date or I'm going to be single or whatever and I feel like you reach some kind of success in your relationships later on and it's going to be real success like it's going to be that person that you know maybe they were single forever but then they meet their absolute soulmate and they're such a catch and they're beautiful and they're you know, amazing and they're in fantastic shape and they, you know, have all these things that maybe they they thought, well, I can never find anyone. And now they find like the perfect person that they never thought they could get. Um, so I feel like for some of you guys, your personal life, your inner life, the life you have with your family is actually going to be a huge success. I'm feeling for some of you who picked pile one, maybe you have been through some traumas or you have a kind of difficult family of origin or something like that. Not everyone, but I feel like there's a message that you're going to break a family chain. You're going to break a family curse. You are going to reinvent things. And that's why for some of you guys, there is a need to walk away from prior dysfunctions or from dysfunctions that were set into place long before you entered the equation. But there's almost a throwing off of chains and saying like, no more, I'm not going to, I'm not going to continue this cycle. And if that means cutting certain people out, then maybe if that's what you feel called to do, maybe that's the best thing. Of course, you have to use your discretion, your intuition, listen to your inner voice. But I feel like you're reinventing yourself in a way that almost people in your life never thought possible. Like some of you guys in this pile, you might have had a very critical mom that said, oh, you'll never get a man because you blah, blah, blah. No man is going to want you because you're blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, there was just friends around you that would say like, yeah, you're not super smart though, or they kind of made fun of you all the time. And it's almost like there's a cutting off that happens with those relationships. And then the slate is cleared. There's some time working through these energies and building back up. And then I feel like the sky is the limit and you guys are really able to 
manifest exactly what you want and have an incredible personal life. We got the King of Cups, King of Wands. I feel like that is combining that into a person would make a very fulfilling romantic partner and very romantic because the King of the Cups and the Wands, you know, they have a charisma to them. Like the Knight of Wands and the Knight of Cups are two player cards. When they come out in tarot, you know, in a love reading, it could mean that the person is you know, they have a good amount of riz and they may be directing that towards everyone. So you never quite know um, when you see that. But I feel like for you guys, this is a beautiful thing. Like you may get that guy or that girl that everyone else is like, oh, they're never going to settle down. They won't want you. They're hard to get. Like you can't land someone like them. And then they want you. And everyone is like, wow. Um, but with the nine of wands, again, that is a card of a little bit of struggle. So so I'm not going to lie. I do feel like you're going to have to earn this. You're going to have to kind of fight for this. It's not necessarily going to just land in your lap super easily with like Jupiter energy. It's going to be something that you're going to have to push for. You're going to have to withstand certain things, get through certain things. And I think that's going to make the success all the sweeter. Let's get into some more cards. So we got Sky writing the fates, feast of plenty, choices and their consequences, horsemen, herald of change, and a tidy house, clarity and organization. So this is a big success card. It, is it a very abundant card? I really do feel like you guys are going to reach success. So rest assured, even though there may be a period of struggle at first, you're going to ultimately, I feel like, have a huge amount of success. Um, and there is that quality with this, the fates card of things being faded or things feeling like when you look back in retrospect, you're like, oh my God, that's, that's why that had to happen that way. Or wow, that job led to this and this brought me to this. And I feel like that is a very fulfilling feeling for you. Like knowing that the path you were on was exactly the right path you were supposed to be on because at times you may question, am I on the right path? Have I lost my mind? What am I doing with my life? Everyone else seems to be so much further ahead and I'm just, you know, I'm, I don't know, 30 and working at a not so great job and like I'm super, everything's going wrong for me and just know that this is on track. It is on schedule. There is a faded quality and there is a need for patience because whenever fate is at play, we kind of have to wait and see. Like I noticed during personal readings, sometimes when you tell someone, well, you're going to have to wait or that's not ready yet, people will be so dejected and so frustrated. But keep in mind that there is divine timing at play. And as humans, it stinks to have to be patient. I know, you know, of course, we all kind of want it like, Let, let's make it happen now. Why do I have to wait? But just like in life, if you try to plant a, you know, cactus in the middle of winter out in the, um, out in the grass of, or the, out in your field in Pennsylvania, it's not going to grow very much. It's going to die probably within hours. And by the same token, if you try to buy, build or plant a fir tree in the middle of Arizona in the desert there, it's not going to grow very much either. So we need to have that patience. We need to tailor the timing. So if you want to plant that, you know, um, beautiful summer flower, you have to maybe wait till summer or spring. You can't just expect it to grow in the cold, barren winter soil. And if you want to plant a summer or a winter plant, you're going to have to plant it in fall or in winter. So everything to the natural world has timing. And maybe that's why we got Archangel Ariel reminding us of this because Ariel has such a beautiful connection to um, nature. So just like the natural world knows and bears know intuitively to go inside their cave and sleep for the winter and birds know intuitively to fly south 
for the summer and no bird would just chill up in Canada in the middle of winter, right? They're all going to go fly south. Um, we have to be willing to have that patience and understand that there's cycles to our life. And I feel like for you guys, a cycle you may be in now may feel like you've just had the universe throwing the book at you, in which case, if it has felt that way, I would encourage you to look up where Saturn is transiting over your chart. You may be going through a Saturn return, Saturn transit through the first house. If it's a financial hardship, Saturn transiting through a financial house like the second house or the eighth house or the 10th house of career. Um, so, you know, we can always see why something is happening. But the thing is, is those things are preparing us, making us stronger. We got angel of strength. So these things are happening for you. These things are happening to bring you this success. And you can only reach this success through withstanding it and being patient. That's why Mars, the planet of achievement, is exalted in Capricorn, the most patient sign, because that's the best way to achieve a goal. It's to have that beautiful beautiful patience. And I also feel like with a tidy house, some of you guys are going to have a really beautiful home to live in. You are going to have the most gorgeous living situation and it's going to be absolutely beautiful. Um, I feel like you're going to have to allow spirit to really take you on this journey. And it's kind of like it's out of your hands, you know, like a lot of this stuff just feels so faded that I feel like, um, there's an element of you needing to just relax, give into spirit and allow it to carry you where it needs to carry you. Um, even though it may seem a little bit crazy, I think the destination you're ending up is so amazing and it's going to be something that you're going to be so, so happy about. So let's get some message cards for pile number one. We want to get some message cards solitude in silence peace prevails narrow pathway tread thoughtfully okay what messages about success do we have for pile one get one more impasse reflect and redirect your energy okay let me get one more <laughs> I never like to end on a bit negative perspective. So we got narrow pathway, impasse, and view from above, get the big picture. So I feel like with solitude, again, there is a clearing out that may happen in your life where you're needing to let go of those certain relationships and be it family, be it friends, there's going to come a time when maybe some of you guys feel really alone or you feel like you've let go of everything and how much more do I have to let go of? I, I have nothing left and I've given it all. And I feel like almost that rock bottom energy that happens is going to be a really beautiful thing um, because I feel like you are you're growing so much and spirit is taking you on this journey, kind of like this image of this uh, little trail up above, up in the sky above this, these, this valley between the mountains, you know, it's, it's probably pretty scary, but this is a sacred journey that someone's going on and they're having to be careful and they're having to trust the process. And it may seem really daunting, but it's going to take them up to the top of this mountain. So even though it may not be the most pleasant part of the journey and you may be freaking out, nervous, scared, wondering what if something goes wrong, if you can trust that, if you can keep your head on straight and you can follow that path, it will lead you to such an amazing destination. We also got impasse, reflect and redirect your energy. I feel like there's going to be many times when you feel at an impasse in this journey. That's why I said throughout this reading, I don't think it's going to be the kind of success that just flows so easily and just feels like it happens overnight and just feels like the best, easy, whatever. It's going to feel hard. I'm not going to lie. But I think that, again, it's taking you somewhere that is going to absolutely blow your mind and be that much sweeter. Just like I said, that apple pie I made from scratch, nothing has ever tasted so good. And I'm sure we can all think of things like that in our life. Um, 
when we earn it, when we make it happen for ourselves, when we work for it, we value it so much more. And I feel like you guys are going to be so overjoyed when you do get the success. So keep this in mind as you're going through it. Keep this in mind as you're journeying through the hardship that ultimately it, it is going to take you to a really amazing destination and you're going through it for a reason let me spin the astro dice see if we have any astrological energies at play for pile number one taurus oh my god the nodes and then we have the eighth house wow so I'm telling you, this is also faded. Here we have the nodes. The nodes are that aspect of fate that show up in our chart, our past lives, our future lives. So how many times can I say this is all going to be very faded for you? It's all going to unfold in a way that may make no sense to a human mind, but is all part of a beautiful spiritual roadmap that spirit has mapped out for you. We also have Taurus, the master builder, another highly patient energy. Taurus is so slow and steady, and that's why it is the master builder. And it's all about um, solidity, a solid foundation. It's all about making sure that Things are unfolding at a kind of reliable, dependable rate because Taurus knows when it happens overnight, it's probably not so trustworthy. So yeah, I feel like for you guys, this is like slow and steady wins the race. This is like, I am going to really work to build something that's going to be solid and real and tangible. I am not going to rush or focus on, but it's taking a little longer than I thought or, well, I want it to happen now. I'm going to have patience for exactly how it should happen. We also have the eighth house. The eighth house is ruled by Scorpio. It's the house of shared income so again for some of you guys this could be a really amazing relationship coming in with a partner that you can trust completely and fully join in a total union with the way scorpio likes it we also have the eighth house representing trauma and kind of like those deep buried parts of our psyche i kind of feel like this is probably the purpose of why you couldn't get success overnight because it's almost like you're being encouraged to do the shadow work before you get the success we can think of countless examples of people who got success early and they weren't able to handle it and they ruined it all they burned through their money you know they ruined their relationships they ruined their life because they had so much money at an early age and they hadn't worked through the traumas yet. So it's actually a huge service for spirit to delay things for you and to allow things to take longer because then once we have done the shadow work, we're not going to be plagued by those same demons or those same negative tendencies. We're going to be so much healthier and so much more capable of using our success in a positive direction. So I think that's why things are being delayed for you, pile number one, but the success is definitely coming big time and it's going to be so amazing when it actually happens. So if this resonated for you, let me know down in the comments. I always love hearing from you, hearing your thoughts, stories, your insights. So let me know what you think. Also, make sure to give this reading a thumbs up, hit the like button and subscribe. And if you want to see more of my content, head on over to my Patreon. I just posted a reading all about surprises coming for you in 2024. And before that, I posted one about your gifts and talents that you were born with, your innate gifts. And before that, in 18 plus, what are their late night thoughts of you reading? So there's lots of content to choose from over on Patreon. New readings get posted all the time and you'll get access to over 75 exclusive readings on Patreon as soon as you sign up. You also get early and ad free access to all my YouTube readings. So you get to be the first to see my YouTube videos when you sign up for Patreon. So the link is underneath the timestamps in the comments and the description, and I would love to see you there. Also, if you want to book a private session with me, if you have a burning question or you just want an energy check-in, you want a mediumship reading, an astrology reading, a tarot pull, whatever you want, you can go to my website to book a slot with me, briarrosetarot.com, and the link for that is in my description. 
Thank you so much for watching, guys. I am sending you so much love and light, and I'll be back again very soon with another reading. Take care, guys. Bye. Hey, Pile 2. Welcome to your reading. So if you guys picked this green pepper, this is going to be your reading. It actually feels apart, and in the inside, it really does look like a real pepper with the seeds, so a little extra detail, but let's get into your cards. You guys got the thinking woman strategy, financial constraints, and the sun. So I feel like you guys will reach success through your intelligence, through your mind. For some of you guys, this could be a very traditional career path, like doing something like accounting or law, um, or some something in business, you know, some kind of very traditional field where you're using your mind and you're behind a desk and that kind of a thing. For others of you, it could be like writing. It could be um, using your creativity to communicate in some way. But I feel like you have a really brilliant, beautiful, and deep mind pile to, and you're going to use this to get success. And it may not seem like the kind of success that I think we glamorize, you know, the overnight person that wins the lottery or the person who was walking down the street and a famous director spots them and puts them in a movie. Sometimes the most successful people are the people we like never hear of, right? The people who um, have a nine to five job and have a huge amount of financial stability or save money and are really careful. Um, and those are the people that end up making so much money and having like a beautiful retirement home. So yes, I do feel like you guys will reach success, but I feel like you're going to have to really put your mind to it and think rationally, think logically, and use your brain in some capacity to make this happen. Um, it could even be that, you know, like I was saying, people who like save money and then they end up having so much money when they retire at like 60, um, but they lived a frugal lifestyle before that. Um, with this financial constraints card, some of you guys, you may not choose to express your success in like a flashy way, show it off, buy the biggest mansion and the most expensive car and designer clothing. You may be the kind of person that wants to live in like a cottage in the woods or a nice house, but not, you know, the most, the biggest one on the block. Um, you may be someone who doesn't really care about what people think of you. You know, it's reminding me of how they say a lot of billionaires in like the tech industry, they'll just wear the most plain old jeans from you know, Target or Costco or something. And they'll drive some old like car from 1998 or something. Um, and they are so confident in their wealth that they're not trying to show off to anyone. I feel like your path to success may be very linear. It may make a lot of sense. It may be that trajectory that is somewhat predictable, like going to a good school, getting a good degree, getting a graduate degree or getting applying to a company, starting there and working your way up. But I feel like your journey to success, it's not going to look like one of those crazy stories that we love so much where the person just randomly gets handed money or they splash out on this really over the top type of lifestyle. It feels like you guys are going to be much more balanced and much more temperate with how you go about this. Um, so there is a message for you not to worry if you're feeling like, you know, everyone else is splashing out on these really nice vacations and buying new cars and you're kind of embarrassed because you're still driving the same old car and for your vacations, you're going to the local beach in your home state, you know. Um, I feel like the long-term trajectory that you're on, it's going to be really amazing and it's going to pay off. And there is an element of, yeah, downplaying, being kind of humble, not feeling the need to 
worry so much about what other people have to say. Um, and this may even be like wise financial decisions like buying stocks or um, investing really well, hiring uh, an investment consultant. I feel like some of you guys are really good with numbers or you're being called to be good with numbers and to have that patient attitude towards it, kind of like a penny saved today is a penny earned tomorrow. Those kinds of like saving mentality quotes um, where it's not about like just having fun and living for today. It's about thinking of your future um, and making those really great long-term decisions and thinking about where you want to be down the line and how you can best achieve that. Again, I feel like those are the less glamorous sides of things. It's not as fun as like deciding to blow your paycheck at the mall and just buy whatever you want. But long term, it's going to be a lot more fun not to have to worry about money so much and to be able to know that your mortgage is paid off or your car is paid off or you have really good life insurance. So if anything happens to you, your family will be fine. Um, and I feel like you guys are really being called to take the time to think about all those things. And those kind of very rational, balanced decisions are definitely going to help bring you that success that you want. One. let's get into some more cards so we got the six of swords seven of pentacles ace of pentacles six of pentacles the high priestess okay the queen of wands and finally the devil card so we have a lot of pentacle energy, six of pentacles, ace of pentacles, seven of pentacles. Again, that is that slow and steady energy. Some of you guys with the six of pentacles, you may either get a loan or some kind of financial help from someone else, be it a family member, a parent, whatever, or you may reach a point in your career where you are employing multiple people. There are multiple people who depend on you for their pay check. There are people who rely on you financially. And I feel like that's one of the reasons why you're being called to take this really cautious approach to money. Because when you have this level of success, it's like you can't take as many risks. So it's almost like telling you to develop that strategy when you're young, you know, to really think long term so that when you step into that power, you're going to be able to handle it. You're going to be able to manage yourself well and you're not going to be blown away by like, oh my God, I suddenly have cash. Let me go spend it all today. Um, you may have a lot of people who depend on you. Some of you guys may have multiple businesses businesses you own. You may have a level of success that gets you featured in like a local newspaper or, you know, in a little blurb in like Forbes or something or a small little interview with an online website. Um, I feel like though, again, you're, you're kind of very humble with this. It's not like you're trying to show off or trying to taunt or rub it in anyone's face. I feel like for a lot of you guys, you are very focused on as long as I have the money like that, I don't really care what anyone else thinks. I don't care how they perceive me. So you're fine with being a little bit quiet. I'm also feeling like for some of you guys, there may come a point where you leave a company behind or even like there's an element of betrayal with a like coworker or a partnership that you're in where it leads it ends on bad terms. Someone leaves and there is bad blood. Um, but I feel like you're kind of learning to stand up for yourself, learning to advocate for yourself and learning to go after what you want, but in a very cautious and like I said, slow and steady type of way. Not to be this, this partner may be someone who's like pushing you to make risky financial choices or pushing you to splash out. And I feel like your energy is to continuously come back to that place of caution and um, kind of like Virgo patience and earth sign practicality instead of thinking about 
maybe we can like blow all the money this month, but we'll make it back next month and making stupid choices or let's take out this huge loan and throw a big party with it. I feel like you're going to have to make those choices to clear out anyone in your life who's pushing you to be irrational with money. And there is a message for some of you guys that maybe there comes a time in your life when you are very indebted. You are in a lot of debt or you don't have the best approach towards money. Maybe there's a time in your life when you are feeling the need to splash out and to keep up with the Joneses and to prove to everyone that you are a success. So let me go buy this expensive bag. I can't really afford. Um, and I feel like there's an energy at a certain point of you really buckling down and realizing that these people don't matter and anyone who's really your friend isn't going to care if you're driving a nice car or a hoopty or whatever kind of car they're going to be with you because they like you as a person so there may come a time when you are forced to really pay off debts buckle down, take a very hard look at your finances and kind of rebuild. And if you ever are in that stage, just a reminder from spirit that that's okay. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to have that be part of your journey as long as you do eventually find some discipline, buckle down and take control of your finances. Um, some of these bad decisions financially could also be linked to like traumas or just really bad habits, bad coping mechanisms. I feel like at a certain point, you learn how empowering it is to trust yourself and you learn how much better of a feeling it is to know that you can rely on yourself. Like I think sometimes when we are doing dysfunctional behaviors, like when we're overspending or eating too much or drinking too much, it's kind of like we're trying to make ourselves feel better, but all it does is give us more anxiety because then the problem gets worse. And now not only are we, you know, stressed about other stuff, but now we are broke or we ate too much and we're uncomfortably full. Um, and we don't feel comfortable in our body if we've gained too much weight. So it's almost like you learn the comfort of discipline in the way that even though in the moment going out and drinking a whole bottle of wine may feel really comforting, when you wake up in the next morning, you're going to feel worse. So let me think of that long-term trajectory and make those decisions that really look out for my long-term self, not myself in the moment. And I think once you guys reach that point, there's a turning point in your journey and then the success really starts to build. But for some of you guys, this success could happen earlier. You may not make these mistakes, but I do feel like for pile two, discipline and really buckling down is going to be key for you in reaching success. I also feel like this could be a message about some of you guys reaching success through writing, through communication. This card always reminds me of a writer because she's holding a book. Um, so it just always gives me like writer thinking of her next novel type vibes. Um, so for some of you guys, that could be, so does the strategy card. Um, and it says journal log. So there could be a message about you guys reaching success through writing. And if that's the case, I feel like it's a message of needing to buckle down with that. Like maybe you have the most amazing ideas with the sun card, but something like writing requires a high level of discipline. It's sitting alone in your room every day in silence, typing away on a laptop for hours and not getting to see any happy like returns from that for a while you know like you're gonna have to plug away at that plug away at that plug away at that for months or years before it's ready to be published and that can be a really difficult mental thing to get through right like we all kind of want that instant gratification that feedback and just to have fun so sitting alone in your room and 
focusing on writing can be very difficult. Um, and this is where, again, I feel like there's something with discipline for some of you guys. Like maybe you have the ideas, you get the downloads, but you don't have the discipline to sit down and follow it through. And I feel like there's going to come a point in your life when everything changes. For some of you guys, I'm hearing this turning point may also relate to how you treat your body. It may be that you become more disciplined about the foods you eat or a daily routine around health, like waking up in the morning to go to yoga or Pilates or to lift weights or whatever, um, taking a look at your finances, being really frugal. Um, I feel like there's some thing that happens where you take the reins. It's almost like I'm seeing um, someone in a horse cart or a, yeah, a carriage or something and the horses are just going wherever they want and then someone grabs the reins and starts steering it in the right direction and I feel like that's what you're being called to do with your life is really think clearly about where you want to head the bad kind of habits you want to leave in the past and I feel like the success happens once you're willing to take those daily schedules and those daily routines and really buckle down and sit through the discomfort of like the boring work day or the annoyingness of having to do your taxes. Um, but I think that that slow and steady build is what's going to lead you to have success or taking on that company or a side hustle or a business idea that may not pay off super well at first, but you can see that trajectory and being willing to have that patience, being willing to have that long-term vision, I feel like is how a lot of you guys are going to have have success. Let's get into these cards. So we got hollow bone, teachability, will of the wisp, treasure, treasures hidden in the shadows, woodwives, adaptability, and dream thief refusal of the call. So yeah, I think for some of you guys, there may be some false starts or maybe times in your life when you felt kind of reckless or you did reckless things. And then at a certain point, there's like a, you know what? I need to go back and I need to do this right energy. Um, there could even be an energy for some of you guys of going back to school when you're older, like when you're, you know, 25 plus enrolling in school and, um, deciding to give it a second shot, deciding to get that degree, deciding to finish what you started, um, or, you know, to start deciding that that was what I really wanted to do growing up for my career. And even though I haven't done it, I'm going to give it another try. Um, so you're really being called to like, I think, come back to yourself and also to be willing to do the hard things because there's some energy about when you're younger running away from hardship, running away when things get difficult, feeling like I can't do this. So I'm just going to go. I'm, you know, this is boring. So I'm not going to pay attention. And um, I feel like you find a lot of solace through kind of the boring decisions, the boring settling down um, and realize that actually you kind of quite like that and you and you like that lifestyle and it's good for you um but not everyone has to run away from it but it may be the kind of success that happens with a company that pays out every month it's not like a lottery win type of success it's not like a winning big at the casino overnight success or you know being a movie star that suddenly gets cast in a film for a million dollars type of success it's like a I earned this amount of money per year and I got paid every two weeks and I filed my tax returns and you know everything coming through exactly like it should um that may be how you find your success moment for yourself. Um, yeah, let me get some message cards for pile number two. Get some messages for pile number two. Oh. So we got far away places. Get ready for new horizons. First light beginning a new cycle. Okay. What other cards? Ascending the mountain, keep going forward, and finally grounding. 
go deep, explore your roots. And I always associate grounding with earth signs, which again, I feel like is so perfect for you guys because earth signs are so patient. They are that slow and steady energy that understands that the best things in life take time. That's why earth signs are like the slowest of the cards um, in tarot or pentacles are the slowest. Um, and so it's, it's, like if you think about Taurus, Taurus is the master builder. And if you think about a house, would you want to live in a house that they built over the course of years or long months? Or would you want to build, live in a house that they built within three days and they like rushed through and it was like quick dry cements and like, you know, they like sped it all up. I would personally definitely pick the house that took years to build or months to build because we all know that that's going to make a better end product. That's going to allow the cement to really dry well. That's going to um, allow them to double check all the electrical outlets and all the plumbing and make sure everything is going right and check, double check it all. So we all know that things that take time to build last longer. And I feel like you're being called to have patience with whatever you're working on. If you're at a point in your life at the moment or at your career where you're like, I want things to happen. Why is it taking so long? long. Things are really slow for me. I want this to happen. Why is it not? Just know that some of that may be a timing issue and that your success may not come in in the form of an overnight crazy payout or crazy boost. It may be something that like one step at a time ascends the mountain. And that's why, again, speaking of other earth signs, Cap Mars is exalted in Capricorn. Capricorn is the mountain goat. So it is going to take that one little step. If you've ever seen a mountain goat, they are pretty slow climbing up the mountain and yet they can get to whatever the highest peak is that no human could ever climb. A mountain goat can find the tiniest ledge and ascend to the highest, highest peak. And that's because they have that patience. They don't rush. They don't try to charge up the mountain like maybe a lion or other animals in the zodiac would. They have that calm, relaxed, chill energy. And that's how they get to the top. And that's why Mars is exalted there. Mars is how we achieve. And the ancient astrologers put the exaltation in Capricorn, saying that if there's any objective you want to achieve, the best attitude to have is patience and understanding and calmness. Um, so yeah, I think for you guys, this is just your reminder that if there's been something you're working on, don't stress about why hasn't it happened now. I'm reminded of one of my favorite quotes, which is even the mightiest oak falls with a thousand strokes of the axe. I think that's so true. I think that if there's anything you really want and you know you want it, then you might as well have that patience and allow and expect it to take a little bit of time. Allow and expect that even if it seems like it's taking a while, that things are still happening. And as long as we stay on track, as long as we keep going, it's like that fr phrase, slow and steady wins the race or the tortoise and the hare. And the hare is so fast, but it gets distracted. It goes somewhere else. And the tortoise just stays on track, just continues forward. And it eventually wins and gets there first just because it didn't get distracting and diffuse its energy and go off somewhere else. So there's this message for you that your success will come, but you're going to have to push yourself. You're going to have to persevere a little bit. You're going to have to work through maybe an initial block or something that doesn't feel like it's coming together the way you had hoped, or it's not happening as fast as you had wanted, but that's okay. That doesn't mean it's not going to happen. That means that it will happen. And when it does, you're going to probably be so excited and not even notice that it's happening because you've been so, you're so used to like just working for it. You know, it's kind of like if you have ever like climbed a mountain and at first you're like, you know, when will we get there? Is it soon? And you keep looking at your map and then there's something where you just kind of resign yourself to it, like on a difficult hike or something. And you're like, ah, oh, whatever. And you just start walking and putting one foot in front of the other, living in the moment and focusing on what's happening around you. And then next thing you know, you're like, oh my God, we're at the top and you didn't even notice. So yeah, I feel like you guys are going to have success, but it's going to happen in a way that 
may not be that overnight glamorous instant success. Um, let's get some astrology dice for pile number two. Okay, so we got Leo, Uranus, and we got the eighth house. So we have um, Aquarius, Scorpio, and Leo. And so what's sticking out to me about these right off the bat is the eighth house is the house of shared income, the house of other people's money. That may be a way that some of you guys earn success. You may become skilled in a certain field. Some of you guys, even with the high priestess, some of you guys may get success through like a spiritual field, being a psychic, being a tarot reader, being an astrologer. Um, yeah, and I feel like for you guys, part of this is like strategizing. Some of the people, you know, pay for like tarot readers, astrologers, whatever, because they want that strategizer. They want that person like the best mediums and psychics combine the ability to channel with the ability to strategize and give advice tell someone you know not just he's not into you but like okay so I don't think he's into you right now but here's how you can get him into you he likes this so do that you know because they're combining their psychic ability to read with the foresight and the ability to project and give advice and I feel like for you guys maybe because you are so smart that could be also how you get money. Another thing is it doesn't have to be with spirituality in particular. It could be that you're a financial planner or you're a lawyer, but you give amazing advice. Either way, you guys are definitely going to use your brain to help others and to give strategic advice to people. And I feel like that's how the money is going to come in is people turning to you because they know you're an expert, because they know that you have a great head on your shoulders and that you know what you're doing. Then we have um, Uranus, which rules over Aquarius, the 11th house. That's the house of hopes and wishes coming true. So it's a really beautiful, benefic house. It also rules over large groups of people. I feel like you guys may have a field where you deal with large groups as well. For some of you guys with the sun coming out and um, some of the, under, uh, the Leo sign as well as Aquarius, this could be an energy even of some kind of public platform, some kind of fame or some kind of attention on you in some way. Um, again, I still feel like the vibe is not an overnight success. It's something that you may have to work at for a while to get visibility, you know, like that writer that's her first novel no one cares about but she writes eight books in a row and then someone's like hey this is a really good writer and she has really good books and that's when things start picking up a little you know and there's a trajectory to it um but it's like definitely hard work is the vibe but with the 11th house you may be dealing with a lot of other people in this you may be selling products to the public you may be um speaking to the public, giving your opinion to the public, dealing with the public in some kind of a form, um, and surrounding yourself. I do feel like you're a bit of an individualist, so I'm not necessarily sensing that you are going to have a ton of people really close around you, but you may have people who work with you or clients, customers, um, but I do feel like you're kind of going to do your own thing. And we do have Leo here, which is a very self-centered energy, not in a bad way. But I feel like, you know, Leo is all about shining brightly. It's also about hobbies, interests, and things we do for creative fun. So again, with the writing energy, some of you guys could be really talented writers and creators in that way. You might have talents with like painting, singing, music. But I do feel like there's kind of a standalone energy where you're going to do your own thing. You're not going to worry so much about working with others on some level. Um, you're going to kind of be an independent person is what I'm getting. So yeah, I think that is what I have for you, pile number two. If that resonates, let me know down in the comments. I always love hearing from you, love hearing your thoughts, your stories. So let me know what you think. Also give this reading a thumbs up, hit the like button and subscribe. And if you would like to see more of my content, head to my Patreon. I just posted a reading all about 
gifts and or no surprises happening for you in 2024 as well as your innate gifts and talents that you were born with and before that I posted an 18 plus what are their late night thoughts of you reading um, but there are over 75 exclusive readings you'll only get access to on Patreon. So you also get early and ad-free access to all my YouTube videos. They get posted over there first. So if that sounds good to you and you want to sign up, head to the link underneath the timestamps in the comments and the description for Patreon. Also, if you want to get a private session with me, you can book that at my website, briarrosetarot.com. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I am sending you so much love and light, and I'll be back again very soon with another reading. Take care, guys. Bye. Hey, Pile 3. Welcome to your reading. So if you picked this red onion, this is going to be your reading. And it actually feels apart, so the inside does look like an onion, pretty detailed for a toy. But yeah, let's get into your cards. You guys got Door to Romance, The Thinking Woman, Yin Yang, and Door to Personal Healing and Happiness. So with Door to Romance, some of you guys may actually marry into some wealth or success. I feel like there's also a connection to all Venusian kind of sources of income. So someone making money through the beauty industry or someone making money through their appearance, if, it, if they're very beautiful. Also possibly through romance novels or writing or putting out songs or movies or whatever that are very romantic in nature. There's some kind of a connection to the Venus side of things, the beautiful way of looking at the world even like self-care or anything that is in that kind of Venus energy, I feel like is a way for you guys to make money. So we have a lot to talk about during this reading, but yeah, let me start with for those of you where this may come in through a marriage or some kind of romantic relationship. So I'm hearing for some of you guys, this romantic relationship could even inspire you and make you better in your career. This could be a romantic relationship that just kicks off a time in your life when you are more inspired, someone that could be a bit of a personal muse to you. Um, and so this could be an influx in cash because of a romantic relationship you've had that just kind of lights a spark underneath you. For others, this could literally be marriage to someone who has some money themselves or is in a really good financial situation, someone who may be financially really well off. Um, this could be, yeah, merging together in union with someone because we see yin yang as well. So this could be feeling like this person completes you somehow and it's really a deep union you can open up and depend on them a lot. And then I also feel like other fields that are being highlighted, they're showing me someone getting a massage and like a facial. So I'm feeling like if someone in this pile has ever considered working in like self-care, spas, beauty treatments, um, anything that pertains to that, kind of like being pampered, I feel like that could be your path to success. This could also be the fact that your success is tied to how you present yourself. Your success is tied to your self-care. And the more you look after yourself, the more you, you know, take care of yourself and um, put your makeup on in the morning. Or of course, if you don't wear makeup, that's fine. But maybe like look after your skin, make sure that your skin is glowing and make sure that you're relaxed, make sure that you had enough sleep and you're eating well and you feel good and you're not stressed out all the time. That may be where your success comes in. Um, I do feel like there could be people in this pile who end up writing a novel or writing a movie, a bestseller, whatever. Um, and with the thinking woman, this could be someone whose thought are inspired by this romantic relationship somehow. So if you've ever considered writing like a romantic novel or a romance novel or a romantic rom-com movie or anything in that realm, I do feel like that could also be a way for you guys to succeed. 
but generally speaking, the energy of Venus comes in easily. It doesn't come in with a lot of effort. So this could be success that just seems to kind of fall in your lap and unfold easily for you without you having to push, without you having to strive and work super hard and break your back for it. Um, it could be success that just feels like it's just flowing in really nicely, really naturally. Let's get into some more cards. So we got, I haven't seen any of these, by the way, the Fool, the King of Cups, the Four of Swords, Six of Cups, the Nine of Pentacles, and the Knight of Swords. Let me put that upside right side up okay so the nine of pentacles is definitely a success energy and it can be success that happens very easily which i just said you know but like that energy is very much around this pile the nine of pentacles is not an energy that is having to work really hard and put the nose to the grindstone and push itself. The nine of pentacles is luxury. It's abundance. It's feeling relaxed. So this could also be you finding success in any luxury oriented field. I'm seeing like high end hotels. I'm seeing, um, really nice, surroundings, luxury boutiques. This could be the life for you guys that you're, that you're entering into. I don't know. Or this could be you making money through this way or both. It could be that you live this kind of a lifestyle and it allows you to know the customer base and open up a store that sells luxury goods or whatever. Um, but I feel like there's a connection to the luxury world and a connection to those higher end nicer items. So like wearing, I feel like for you guys, maybe wearing cashmere instead of whatever random acrylic sweater you bought at H&M may be a way for you to manifest wealth. It could be that you are manifesting wealth through stepping into a relaxed, open energy instead of having to work for it. We got the Four of Swords. The Four of Swords is a card of rest. It literally shows someone asleep. So usually speaking, the Four of Swords is not going to be someone who is working their tail off and just pushing themselves to the limit. This is going to be someone who probably has a pretty strong sleep schedule that I, that they stick to and, um, are willing to take breaks and are willing to relax. It could even be having a job, but it's a relatively easy job that allows you a lot of time off or where the job allows or involves a lot of socializing. You know how sometimes someone will get a job at like an art studio or an art gallery and their job is just to host like high-end dinner parties for guests who want to buy art, you know, and they're not having to like crunch numbers or carry heavy items around. They're just there to socialize and push the art and be kind of glamorous. Like it could be a job like that, um, that brings you success. But I am seeing, uh, a luxurious lifestyle around you guys. I am seeing nicer things in life. So this could just be what you surround yourself with. This could be a lifestyle where you're getting like a you know, weekly facial and a weekly massage and you're shopping at designer clothing stores and you're getting really nice things. Um, I also feel like there's a creative side coming through. Venus can be a creative energy. We also have the King of Cups. He is highly creative. And we got the Six of Cups. And the Six of Cups can be reminiscing about beautiful past relationships. So again, there could be a romantic relationship that inspires you to do something that inspires some kind of art um, that people can sense that love energy through it and really love that and love tapping into it and are happy to purchase whatever from you, whether it's a book, whether it's a movie, whether it's just you have a clothing line, but it was inspired by your relationship and they feel the energy and they love it. Um, I feel like some of you guys do have a creative gift in some way and getting in touch with your creative side may also be very therapeutic. So 
it may be something that you do for love or that doesn't pay well at first. Maybe you have some other way of having an income, um, but you work on this creative stuff on the side and then eventually you're able to pivot into making more money off of your creativity. And that could be how you find acclaim and success because I feel like that's more connected to the acclaim side of success, the kind of feedback and recognition from the public. Um, I do feel like the partner that's coming through for those of you guys who might marry into this is very supportive, very loving. They are so generous with you, very happy to give you whatever you need. Um, so whether this energy is permanent and a soulmate or a husband or a wife or whether this is just a fleeting relationship i feel like it really awakens something in you and your energy itself is very sweet very gentle and i think very charismatic as well so there's another energy with you putting yourself out there in the public somehow so maybe like um showing your face in some way some of you guys look physically very beautiful and this could be you, um, you know, modeling or having a TikTok or a YouTube where you show your face, um, acting, anything that could involve you presenting yourself to the public, even like if you had that clothing brand, if you were to actually wear the clothes and post them on Instagram and show yourself in them, I feel like you do have a natural and innate charisma pile number three. So the more you show up yourself, the more people are going to be drawn to it. The more people are going to um, connect with it and enjoy it. So definitely this could be the vibe of you guys um, showing yourself to the world and pushing yourself to open up a little bit more. Yeah. Open up to others, show yourself, kind of present yourself and let people in, in that sense. Um, I also feel like this could be you socializing, making money through socializing. So like maybe you have a friend who's able to give you a job interview and you, you know, go to a dinner party and hit it off with someone next to you. And they are like, Oh, by the way, um, you know, I've been looking for this, someone to fill X, Y position at my company. Would you be interested? But this could be finding monetary success through socializing, through dinner parties and circulating in that way, putting yourself out there in that way and um, meeting people. I feel like your social skills may be very on point, pile number three. It's giving me Libra vibes because Libras are so good at communicating. They're charismatic. They really get along with everyone. Um, they are the diplomat of the zodiac. Dip diplomacy, dip what was I saying? Diplomacy. Wow. Um, could also be a way for you guys to reach success. Um, yeah, you could be the kind of person that they use as like a liaison talking through a difficult company transfer or something, or, um, that they send out as like a recruiter to charm people and get them to work for the company. I feel like you are really good with your words, with how you talk to people. You have an innate grace. So yes, I would say you are going to find success in those kinds of spaces. And spirit is also giving you a message that you should take care to spend times and spend your time in like higher end environments. So don't be hanging around the more rundown side of town. Or if you're going to go get your coffee, maybe don't just go to like the cheap free coffee that they serve at your college in the common area and it's kind of sloppy and you know it's not super good um maybe take the time and go to the nice coffee shop that has the higher end coffee and take sit down and have a table and you know chat with someone there and like take your time and enjoy um so being connected to higher end environments luxury environments may be a way for your energy to align with this and for you to reach success some people are more permeable to their environment and i feel like 
for you guys, the more you can spend time in high-end places and bathe in that energy, the more your energy is going to shift into that because I, I'm hearing that you guys have a very permeable energy field. You really take on the energy of the places you're at. So make sure you're going to those nice high end and really beautiful places even if it costs a little bit more money let's get into some more cards many masks the authentic self lay of the land ancestral wisdom magician's sword confidence in your magic and heart home compassion there's such a like heart venus energy around you guys it's really interesting um definitely have this vibe that there may be I guess very wealthy people you may be dating you may naturally attract like wealthy high-end partners and this may somehow kick off success for you either you're marrying them or dating them and entering into a different social circle or they're just inspiring you in your business maybe even helping you in your business giving you tips teaching you within that um, but I feel like for you guys you know you're charm your charisma and your physical looks are going to be a major blessing for you in how you um reach this success and reach new levels and the fact that you are able to get along with lots of different people we got this many masks card and i almost feel like you're good at that like you can switch your vibe to get along with lots of different people you can switch your way of socializing to talk to this person talk to that person be more formal be less formal depending on what it deserves what the situation requires so I feel like that is a huge bonus for you. And yes, you may reach a lot of success in that, especially like a higher end um, lifestyle where you're maybe, you know, maybe when you have kids, you have a nanny or maybe you're driving around in a really nice, not just like the rundown minivan, but a really nice state of the art SUV, you know, that you just bought. Um, this could also be a really nice home for some of you guys living in like a nice mansion or living in just a really beautiful well-appointed nice home and again spirit is saying for you to shift your energy into align with alignment with that early and of course i would never tell someone to spend money that they don't have so you know if you're like yeah i can't afford to go out and drop you know eight dollars on a latte then of course i totally get that but if you can afford something like that if you are able to go out and drop a little bit more money to have your morning coffee at the nicest spot in town i definitely think you should do that i think that the energy you surround yourself with um, is going to be very crucial for your journey so make sure that you're splashing out when you can and when it's not a stretch for you um, because I think that's going to compound on itself and I also feel like you get along in those spaces really well um, and also there may be a period of like rediscovery of yourself later in life like I'm seeing when you're 40 or 50 or 60 or whatever there may be a discovery of like you know what I I really always wanted to write a book and so I'm going to do that or I really always wanted to be a painter or I, I really always wanted to open a nail polish company even though you know I don't know the first thing about it but I've always been fascinated with nails and so I feel like there may be some kind of like reinvention pivot second journey second chapter in your story that happens when you're a little bit older that I feel like is going to be really fun possibly moving to a really exciting city like I'm seeing Paris but it doesn't have to be Paris but it could be you know one of those kind of like new journey in life new lease in life moments where you discover a new part of yourself I could even see you guys like dating younger for some reason like almost like maybe you have success and then you end up dating younger or having a very passionate relationship later in life um that's for only some people but that's what i am getting um that yeah there's gonna be kind of a little plot twist happening for you pile number three um maybe once you thought oh i'm settled down now nothing's gonna happen and suddenly you get this new exciting relationship or you get this new lifestyle coming to you um we did get the fool card so yeah that definitely corresponds to that as well and i feel like you get more confidence kind of like sta standing on your own two feet this could also be making money through like a passion 
So it could even be something like one of those people that's like, I always love to go to the beach. So I started a bikini line, you know, and they make a ton of money through that, even though no one would expect that. And it's, it's kind of such a fun field that people wouldn't think there's a lot of money in it, but they end up making bank because people can feel the fun, the enthusiasm, the love in their bikinis they can sense the energy that the company was created with so yeah i feel like this could also be a lifestyle that allows you a lot of freedom it may be a lifestyle that allows you to travel it may be a lifestyle that allows you to um to have a lot of free time like i said get a weekly facial or a bi-weekly facial or a monthly massage or you know a weekly massage or uh, to pop out of the office for a couple hours every day to have a long leisurely lunch. Um, so you may have a lot of freedom and be in a position with your career where you can kind of choose how you spend your time and choose how you enjoy it. So yes, I would call this very successful by any standard. It feels like you get to do what you love. So we got for you guys messages protected by angels. You are cherished by the angels. Miracles expect the wondrous to emerge and wondrous universe. I love that those came out right one after another. F expect the wondrous to emerge and then what comes next? Wondrous. So it already did emerge. Wondrous universe walk in beauty. And there's that emphasis on beauty again. Like I feel like when you guys walk in beauty, the more you choose to surround yourself in beauty, the more money and abundance is going to come to you. This could even be redecorating your home or your house so that you feel so comfortable in it and it's just so beautiful and you love everything you own and the money starts pouring in for you. Um, this could be a connection to like your surroundings, how you dress, how you adorn yourself, and the amount of effort you put into self-care and the financial situation you're in. So the more effort you put in, the more beauty you are surrounded with, I feel like the better things are going to go for you in your career. We also got miracles. So this could be a life where you feel like, I can't believe I met him. I'm so lucky. I can't believe I got this job. I'm so lucky. And you just feel like you kind of hit the lotto when it comes to so many things in your life. You just lucked out on a very deep level. Um, let's get some more cards for pile number. Oh, you guys got two cards or three. Oh my goodness. I did not mean to pull out three cards, but anyway, you guys get extra. See, that's your theme. You keep getting more than the average person. So good for you. So we got desert passage. Trust there's a divine plan. Joy and delight. Open your heart to joy and uncovering treasure. Beneath the surface lies a great bounty. So that is really the huge financial card for this um, deck. And so it really is a good sign for your finances that you are going to be very well off and with joy and delight. Again, I feel like it's that message that the more joy, the more almost like youthful, playful energy you can have. We also got the six of cups, which is totally that youthful, young, beautiful, happy, joyful energy. Um, so the more you can find the time or find the space in your life to search out for that, to find time to do things that put a smile on your face and bring you happiness and make you feel good, I think that the more that's going to pay off for you and the more you're going to um, find that compounding on itself. And so maybe this is your energy to stop and smell the roses and to pause to like pet the puppy and to don't feel silly by spraying on two extra spritzes of perfume before you leave the house. And don't feel silly that you dropped a lot of money on your favorite expensive perfume. You know, like this is like about taking the time for these small little things and that the more happy and joyful you are the more you're going to magnetize wealth to you pile number three and if you can see it you can dream it you can achieve it so i feel like you know keep your eyes to the sky because the sky is a limit for you guys pile number three let's get oh my goodness okay that just fell let's get into some astrology dice for pile number three 
oh my gosh, Libra. I was definitely getting that Libra vibe. And then we got the first house, Aries, and the sun. Perfect. So let's start with Libra since you definitely have been giving me a Libra vibe the whole time. Libra is ruled by Venus. Venus is the planet of love. And then Libra is the expression of that in air energy. Um, and so Libra is incredibly good with their words. They are the diplomat of the Zodiac. They always know what to say in different social situations. Um, also, Libra rules the seventh house of relationships. So once again, this could definitely be you getting money through a relationship or just having a beautiful level of success success in your relationship. It doesn't even necessarily have to be just a wealthy partner, although it definitely could be, but it could be one of those relationships you're in where everyone's like, oh my God, you are so lucky. Ye wow, he's the perfect partner. And maybe he's not even that wealthy, but he's just really good looking or you just love him and you just like feel like you guys are soulmates and you are grateful for him every day and you truly feel fulfilled in that relationship. So um, take it how it resonates for you. But with the seventh house of relationships highlighted, Libra energy highlighted, it definitely feels like you are going to feel super successful and lucky in your love life. And that's going to bring you, I think, a lot of joy, a lot of fulfillment. And you're going to feel very protected and cherished in this. You're going to feel like you are really treated so well by this person and that they give you a lot of respect. They see the best in you and hopefully vice versa. We also have the sun, Leo. And as I said, for some of you guys in this pile, this could be about taking a forward facing role with the public. So showing yourself to the public in some way, um, whether it's getting some money through modeling, through showing your face in a public sphere like YouTube or TikTok or getting cast in a movie, but this could be like using your looks, using that side of your charisma to get ahead and to get people's attention because I do feel like you have that natural charm, je ne sais quoi, that draws a lot of people to you then we also have Aries the first house this may be like the second the second act that I'm sensing for you guys where maybe there's a time in your life where you kind of choose to be a little bit selfish choose to reinvent yourself in some way choose to have some kind of a new start in the journey new stage in your life and I feel like this journey for you is going to be very, very fulfilling and take you to places you could have never expected. So it could be like buying an apartment in New York City when you're, you know, 55 or something and living in the West Village and going out every night or buying an apartment in Barcelona and having like siestas every day and eating paella and wine every night and it's just like a beautiful glamorous lifestyle for you at an age when I feel like some people would be like oh my gosh what are you doing so I feel like your success this happiness this kind of youthful joyful quality you have it's gonna last for a really long time and yes I think you're gonna have a very successful life even though sometimes it may not be predictable to all of you guys people may look at you and be like oh my god like won't she grow up or why isn't she you know settled down by now or oh my god she's 60 she needs to like stop dating a younger guy or whatever and I feel like for you this is this is going to be your success is a life that you really really love and brings you so much individual joy and happiness so that is what I have for you pile number Three. I really hope that resonated. If it does, let me know down in the comments. I always love hearing from you, hearing your thoughts and your stories, your insight, all of it. So let me know. Also make sure to give this reading a thumbs up, hit the like button. And if you want to see more of my content, head on over to my Patreon. I just posted a reading all about what surprises are happening for you in 2024, as well as your innate gifts and talents that you were born with. And before that, I posted one about their 18 plus late night thoughts about you. Um, but there are over 75 exclusive readings you'll only get access to on Patreon. You also get early and ad free access to all my YouTube videos so you get to be the first to watch everything I post here on YouTube. If all that sounds
sounds good to you, head to the link underneath the timestamps in the comments and the description and join me on Patreon. Also, if you want to get a private one-on-one -on -one session with me, you can get that at my website, briarrosetarot.com. You can have me pull tarot for you, read your astrology channel for you, um, et cetera, et cetera. You can do a combination of all three. You can yeah, book me for a half hour, an hour, get to the bottom of whatever questions you have, or just have it be an open channeling session, energy check-in, whatever. If you're interested in a slot with me, go to my website, briarrosetarot.com, and the link is in my description for that. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I am sending you so much love and light, and I'll be back again very soon with another reading. Take care, guys. Bye. Hey pile four, welcome to your reading. So if you guys picked this corn, this is going to be your reading. They did a lot of great detail on these little kernels and the leaves on the corn. It actually peels apart, but it's just plain yellow in the middle. So not too fun to show you guys, but let's get into your cards. You guys got storm warning, adjacent possibilities, the thinking man and seventh chakra archangel Uriel. So it's really interesting that your angel is Uriel. And then we also got storm warning because technically Uriel um, rules over the weather. So just kind of a cool synchronicity we have happening here. But I feel like for a lot of you guys, you have multiple options and multiple routes to the top of the mountain. You guys do have multiple ways that you could achieve success. So maybe you're one of those people who's gifted in a lot of different fields. Like you're not just good at math or writing. You're good at both. You're not just someone who is book smart. You're also someone who maybe is attractive as well and could use that. It feels like you have multiple gifts, multiple ways of reaching the top. And what's also interesting to me is we got Archangel Uriel and Uriel rules over like divine intuition. Uriel is the angel that came to Noah to warn him about the flood that was going to happen. So Uriel kind of works through our thoughts and we also got the thinking man. So this could be a brilliant idea to start a company that seems to come out of nowhere. This could be a brilliant idea for a best-selling novel that just occurs to you one day and you just get the full download of it. That's what happened to J.K. Rowling when she was going to write Harry Potter. She just said suddenly the whole idea, the whole vision for the series just came in a full download. Imagine that. I mean, that's a thick, that's a lot of data considering how big those books were and how there were seven of them. So that's pretty cool to think that all of that can happen in an instinct, in an instant, but that's how real works. That's how you'll actually know Uriel is around. He's not as commanding as, say, Archangel Michael, but you'll have a thought enter your mind and be like, wow, I should do that. So some of you guys in this pile, you may be really good deep thinkers. You may have incredible ideas that you could market that for like an invention, you know, a yeah, like a physical invention of a device or um, a toy or a car or literally anything, but you may have that inventor's mind that you come up with things. This could also be, I should write this book and I, I know the full download of what I should talk about or I should start a YouTube channel. But either way, it's going to come to you in a full divine download. It's going to come to you as like a knowing as a sensation, as a sudden burst of insight. And like I said, it's also interesting that Uriel rules over the weather and then you got the storm warning um, card. So how I'm kind of interpreting that is for some of you guys, there is almost a call to adventure. I feel like when you're younger, some of you guys may travel a lot. You may do like extreme sports. Some of you guys may be kind of sensation seeking. And it's funny because I was just reading about how um, people who are ADHD have a high um have a high uh, proclivity to 
chase sensation. So by that, I guess they mean they're kind of easily bored. So they're prone to doing extreme sports. They're prone to kind of risky behavior at times, like skydiving or bungee jumping, traveling to crazy places. They love to seek out sensations. And I feel like some of you guys may have that vibe about you at certain times. You may be someone, especially when you're younger, who doesn't like to sit still or doesn't like to stay in the same place for a long time. And I'm hearing if that's the case, some of you guys may get your divine insight and download that will bring you success while traveling. You may travel to a country and they have a certain way of doing things and you're like, wow, I should bring that up to, back to my country. Like that could make a lot of money. Like it's like, I think Sriracha was started by a Vietnamese immigrant to America, if I'm remembering correctly, who wanted just like a spicy sauce, you know, that isn't uncommon in Viet Vietnam, but it was different in America. It wasn't widespread in America. So people loved it. And obviously now it's like a household name. So many people know about Sriracha. So even what might seem commonplace or just normal in one area can be valuable when it's like new and different. And some of you guys may find insight through traveling. You may also just get downloads in that way. The ninth house of travel is ruled by Sagittarius, which is a very spiritual sign, ruled by Jupiter, co-ruler of Pisces. So there's a lot of spirituality to Sagittarius and to travel itself. We often find insights of ourselves through traveling. I feel like some of you guys, when younger, you may have that Sagittarius restlessness where you might not find a career path that makes perfect sense for you, or you may not know exactly what you want to do. Sometimes that's the curse of someone who's very gifted in many different areas. They could do that, but they could also do this and they're good at that but they'd also be good at that. And they could also do this. And it can be very hard to figure out what career path to fully pursue because all of them are, you know, possibilities. You're, when you're that good at everything, when you're smart and pretty and funny and charming and blah, blah, blah. I mean, it sounds like a great problem to have, but it can be hard to settle down and be like, okay, let me dig into this, you know? especially if you have a tendency to kind of run when you get bored, which some of you may have. Um, so I feel like for you guys, there's an energy of kind of burning out your restlessness when you're younger, burning that energy off and kind of tiring yourself out and then maybe settling into a career when you're a little bit older and you kind of figure out what's right for you. So don't be freaked out if there's a period of indecision or not knowing what you should do or feel Feeling really confused because I feel like that's going to be totally normal for you pile number four and also you are very gifted psychically so some of this career it may have to do with psychic abilities it may be that you are supposed to pursue something um, when it comes to a psychic gift when it comes to like working in a spiritual field, doing tarot readings, doing psychic readings, or even if you're not working specifically as that, it could be that, like I said, lots of different fields, you use your intuition, you get downloads. I think a lot of writers or um, musicians, artists, you know, they'll say, I woke up from a dream and I had the baseline for this song, or I, I woke up for a dream and I knew exactly what I was going to write about. I had the full vision of it. Um, and so I feel like for you guys, don't be afraid to listen to that psychic ability. Don't be afraid to listen to your psychic insights and the downloads that you get. Let's get into some tarot and I haven't seen any of these. So this is the Knight of Wands, the Ten of Pentacles, Ace of Cups, Page of Pentacles, Five of Wands, Eight of Swords and the Five of Cups. So there is that energy that some of you guys may have disappointment early on in your life. You may feel like success is elusive for you early on or you've tried at a bunch of different things and none of them work out. I'm hearing Jack of All Trades, Master of None. But again, keep in mind that whenever there is that dejected energy around us or that feeling of like, 
things are not working out, we can transmute that. We can take that as a redirection or a learning experience instead of getting bogged down in the dumps and allowing ourselves to go to a negative mindset. We can stay in a really positive place and realize that we're going through those things for a reason and we're being taught things for a reason. You know, it, it reminds me of Einstein, not Einstein, Edison, and they said he tried a thousand different versions before he landed on the light bulb. A thousand different versions. That's a lot of different versions. That's a lot of time to fail. That's a lot of times to be disappointed and to look at yourself in the mirror and be like, okay, that didn't work out either. Um, I can only imagine how dejected you might feel at the time. I know he also um, didn't do well in school and his teachers thought he was like too talkative or too, ch I don't know, too, sounds kind of ADHD. Maybe there's a lot of people with ADHD in this pile, but he was like always thinking of a lot of different things. His mind was all over the place. And so his teachers didn't like that. He dropped out of school. I'm sure at a certain point, he really felt like this is never going to succeed. I must be crazy. But then all you need is that one light bulb to work. And that made history. Um, so for you guys, I feel like there's also, by the way, an energy of you serving the collective somehow. Like you are supposed to have success. And I'm hearing for some of you guys, your name is going to be remembered. You are going to have a legacy. This download just came through really strong that some of you guys are meant to leave a legacy. So it's almost like not to pay attention to things like money. And it's not to say that you guys are not going to have money. Um, but I'm getting there's a focus for you guys. There's a spiritual mission you're on. And sometimes you know, money is not the focus for people on spiritual paths. It's not to say you can't have money. You can. Um, but sometimes, you know, the blessings of this earth are not the blessings we get in the spiritual realm. You know what I mean? And sometimes you're meant to be a disruptor, an early adapter, a visionary who sees things into the future and people on the earth won't get it until maybe later. Like I know Van Gogh is a great example of that. Someone who was completely unappreciated in his lifetime and people thought he was just a loser. And then he is now the most record selling and the high, I think, I don't know if his record's been broken, but he set the record for the most expensive painting. And I do believe even if, if another one of his major paintings went on sale today, it would probably break all the records because he has really the most famous painting style in the world of any painter, the most distinctive, the one everyone knows. Um, so I know I went to a Van Gogh Museum exhibit when I was a kid at the National Gallery in DC, or I tried to go because there was literally a line around the block and I'd never seen that at the National Gallery like that. I'll never forget the look of that line and how annoyed I was at my mom for trying to make us go. Um, but it always stuck in my mind that many people wanting to go into that exhibit. And again, there's so many exhibits at the National Gallery, but I never seen people willing to wait for like five, six, seven hours every day in order to get into an exhibit, right? Like that's like Taylor Swift concert level. And that was Van Gogh's power even a hundred years after his death, right? And at, during his life, no one cared about him. So that's the biggest example that I can give. You know, there's so many examples like that of people that don't get appreciated at their time and then they get appreciated later. But with the 10 of pentacles, I'm definitely not saying you guys won't get financial success as well. I'm just saying, I feel like some of you guys are building something much bigger and you need to have that foresight that, you know, some of these things are happening on a spiritual path. They're happening on a spiritual timeline. And you aren't even supposed to be paying attention to like how it gets received or what someone else thinks or what someone else has to say to it because where you're headed is so much bigger, so much more important. And it's like, that's just a tiny detail. And it's kind of almost even beneath you to pay attention to, well, why haven't I gotten the recognition or why haven't I gotten the success? It's like, why even sweat that when you are headed somewhere so much bigger? You know what I mean? That's like if you were on a road trip to like LA and you're, I don't know, focused on and obsessed with some tin cans on the side of the road in Alabama or something, you know, like it's like, why even focus on that? Because 
shouldn't you be focusing on like, I'm going to be in LA and I get to go to Hollywood and I'm going to be in Beverly Hills and paying attention to your journey and where you're headed, not the meantime of like, oh my gosh, those tin cans and they're kind of like slightly rusted and they're a little dented, like who cares? You know what I mean? And so I don't know who needs to hear that, but I feel like for some of you guys, you're also building like karma in heaven. You're building your Akashic records. You're building a path towards major success. Um, but these Again, the success path may come to you through a major download. We got the Ace of Cups. That's a very psychic card. And the Aces all come from God. They're like a burst of insight, a flash of, I should do this, a flash of desire or inspiration or energy or focus or whatever. But it is something that comes actually from spirit. And then the Kabbalah, they're connected together, the highest element of God. So the Aces are really powerful cards. And with the Ace of Cups, it could be a burst of psychic insight. It could be a download about something you're supposed to do spiritually. And it also could be a creative insight. So a creative spark, a drive to do something in a creative field of some kind. So it could be writing, it could be singing, songwriting, anything that relates to something creative, painting, cooking, whatever. Um, I feel like there's also a vibe of you guys needing to go off track or march to the beat of your own drum. And I also feel like it's through doing something kind of unconventional that you are going to find success. So it's going to be doing something that is not really super predictable, not really super... um in alignment with what everyone else is doing, not super like... The norm, you know, there's something very different and unique and outside almost society that I feel like you guys are going to have success from. Um, so there may be a vibe of you having a time in your life when you feel like, oh my God, maybe I look like a loser. Maybe everyone else is moving ahead and I'm alone or I'm not having the financial set success or whatever and feeling a little stagnant, feeling a little left behind. Um, and I feel like it's only through you pushing through that and continuing to listen to your intuition that you are going to find success. But we do have the Ten of Pentacles. So that is a really strong and really powerful success card. And that can definitely mean that you're going to get a lot of money and you are going to find um, financial success that maybe at a certain point, you know, you'd only dreamed of financial success that just is very overwhelming. The Ten of Pentacles can indicate a lot of money and an overwhelm of financial abundance. Um, and it's also financial freedom. Like I feel like for some of you guys, freedom, I'm getting Sagittarius vibes. It feels like freedom is a big deal for you. It feels like you are very independent minded and you really want to be able to do your own thing and live your life on your terms. And I feel like because of that, if you have a lot of money, you may shell it out on like experiences or travel or doing crazy things or buying from some unknown artist that no one else cares about, but you're obsessed with. And I feel like the more individualistic you are, the more you stick to marching to the beat of your own drum and listening to that inner voice instead of what society says or your friends say or what other people think or trying to fit into a timeline of what others have for you, the more success you're going to have, the more it's going to compound on yourself. It feels like you guys are going to be on a very unconventional path towards success. But I do feel like a lot of you guys are building a name for yourself, a reputation for yourself, like you are going to be remembered. People are going to have heard of you. There's going to be a legacy that you have. So that's really the most important thing. And all the heartbreak or the difficulty that happens in the meantime is going to be no big deal. It reminds me of one of my favorite quotes, and I think it's by Freud. And it is, um, in retrospect, the years of struggle were the most beautiful. And I think that's really true. Like everyone who has success, a lot of times they'll say, the favorite time of my life was when I was broke eating ramen noodles in my kitchen, you know, in my like tiny studio apartment, you know, in a bad part of LA or something. Or the, you know, the best times of my life was when I was just starting out in New York and I had like 10 roommates and we lived in a walk up and I, you know, barely slept, but I just love that time in my life because there's something beautiful about the struggle. And I'm not saying that you guys are going to have to struggle a long time. I just feel like 
you love that adventurous energy. And I feel like that adventurous energy is exactly what's going to lead you to this success, this long-term success. There's something about you doing something so different, so outside the box, so outside the norm, and everyone being a little surprised and shocked by you, but like really admiring you, especially in the end. So let's get into some more cards. Eye of the Needle, Intentionality, Lost in Space, Needing Direction, Horned Cactus, Resourcefulness, and finally Feast of Plenty, Choices and Their Consequences. So Feast of Plenty is a really positive financial card. You guys have gotten two very strong success cards proving that I really do think you guys are going to have a lot of success, financial success, abundance, and you're going to have a lot of choice in your life. Like I think that you're not going to have to have a boring life where you are answering to someone else and you have no agency. It feels like your life, you're going to get to live it on your terms. You're going to get to choose what you want to do, where you want to go, who you want to become, you know, all that jazz, it's going to be up to you. You're not going to have to answer to anyone else. And I think that that's a huge, huge thing for you. Like you want to be able to call the shots in your life. And I think you're going to be able to, I think that is going to be a reality for you is, um, is not having to answer to anyone else. Um, yeah, we got lost in space, but it's almost like I feel like you're not lost. You are driving around and maybe it looks a little crazy to someone else. They're like, they have no direction, but I feel like you're living life from a very authentic perspective and you're kind of gathering information and figuring out where you want to go, where you want to head. So don't be afraid if there's a period in your life where you feel directionless or you feel aimless or you feel like you don't know what you're doing because I think you're going to get to the right destination in the end. And again, you're very smart pile number four. You guys are like my all-rounders, talented in so many different fields. You know, you've got it all. You guys are like a jack of all trades and I feel like you guys really have lots of options. You can kind of the sky is the limit. You can choose many, many different fields you want to succeed in. And you may have many, many iterations of your life, many different careers, many different identities, and many different parts of your journey. Um, so yeah, don't be afraid. Don't be freaked out if, if it feels like you can't figure it all out at first or if the the road kind of is unknown to you or things seem to um not take shape the way everyone else's life is taking shape because I do feel like ultimately you're going to end up in such a place of happiness and fulfillment and success let's get some more cards for pile number four and we want to know for pile four are they going to reach success how is that going to look for them? Finding sanctuary, opening to your spiritual source. So yeah, your spirituality is going to be a really key part of this journey for you. A really key part of you finding success is going to be um, using your intuition, using your spirituality, listening to that little inner voice inside of you. You guys have spiritual abilities. You have the ability to listen to your higher self and access that at any time. So I feel like that's going to direct you and keep you on the right path. And if that doesn't make sense to other people logically, if they're like pile number four is a mess, and what they're doing doesn't make any sense and they're kind of crazy. Let them think what they're going to think. But you can hear the calling from spirit and that's why they call it a calling because only you can hear that voice on the other side of the phone. It's not a conference call. It is a single call. And so if they don't understand it, if they don't get it, oh well. Let's get some more cards for pile number Four. So we got, oh my goodness, gates of triumph. Success expands in your life. View from above, get the big picture. Impasse, reflect and redirect your energy. And wise leader, you are a beacon for others. And I really do feel like you are being called to step into a leadership role. A lot of you guys who pick this pile, you're supposed to have some kind of public platform. You're supposed to be some kind of public figure. You're supposed to leave a legacy. As I've said, you are supposed to 
serve out some very spiritually powerful work that you probably signed up for on the other side. So remember to have the big picture in things. Sometimes what we're doing in this lifetime isn't meant to just end in this lifetime. Money you can't take with you. So that, and not to say you guys aren't going to have money. I do feel like you guys will have major success and money we got success expands in your life but i also feel like you're building so much more than that you're building something that's going to last the test of time you're going to build something that has legacy and has your any descendants of yours be proud of you um you're building something that you can take with you into the spiritual realm knowing that you did the work in this lifetime that you signed up to do and that's so amazing that's something that so many people could only dream of being able to carry out so so yeah, just a reminder not to get hung up if you do feel like there's times when you're blocked or things aren't working out. I feel like you are being taken on a spiritual journey. And also I have found some people with a really strong spiritual mission when they try to do other things they may feel like it's all blocked. They may feel like this is crazy. Like I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to get this like job at this you know, banking company. And every time I get blocked from it, but then as soon as I try to apply to work at like this really competitive crystal shop, my application gets granted on the first application and no one else gets accepted. And it's notoriously hard to apply, but I made, you know what I mean? There's those weird synchronicities where when you do something off track, it doesn't work. And when you do something on track, it just flows. So I feel like you are, you know, you're being kind of like herded in a certain direction by spirit because they want you to carry out this work. Let's get some astrology dice for pile four. We got Mars, aka Aries, fifth house, aka Leo, and then Pisces. So this very strong spiritual vibe is definitely coming through. Of course, we have Pisces, which is a extremely spiritual sign, very psychic, and also very creative. We have Leo, who that is also super creative. So there's, and of course, Aries as well. Um, but there's a lot of emphasis on your creativity. So I feel like for some of you guys, this could be using your gifts for a creative instinct, for a creative task, whether it's writing, whether it's acting, songwriting, cooking, anything creative. This could also be a way for you to channel on the other side. I feel like you have a channeling ability. I feel like that psychic ability you have with the seventh chakra highlighted, the crown chakra, the highest chakra, the ability to tune in and access the astral plane. Again, you can use that as your compass. That will direct you to the path you're supposed to be on to carry out these missions. And the fifth house can be a house of, well, Leo is an energy that gets a lot of attention. It is royalty. It is a star energy. It is the focus of everyone's attention. So again, I wouldn't be surprised if you're being called to get some success through some kind of public eye, leave a legacy, put your work out there on some kind of a public platform in some kind of a way. And Spirit is saying for you not to be afraid of the spotlight, not to shy away from that because the world needs your gift and the world is going to benefit from seeing more of that out there. Um, so spirit wants you to share that and be generous with the world, be generous with others and allow people to see all the beautiful things you have to offer because pile number four, you guys are such beautiful souls and you really have so much to bring to the table. I feel like the collective is going to benefit from you showing yourself bravely. We also have Aries highlighted Mars, the first house. And Aries is a very independent energy. It's the first house of the self. So it really marches to the beat of its own drum and does its own thing and isn't afraid to stand alone. And I feel like that's something you're being called to do is sometimes also people can sense Aries, the power of Aries. Aries ascendants get this a lot. Aries suns, I notice sometimes will just seem to face endless conflict. It's like people can sense their power and they're just like, ooh, let me mess with that person because I know that they they almost get insecure by that power of Aries that radiates through, the power of Mars. So again, I feel like some of you guys, you may face some road bumps. You may face some hiccups. You may face people who are coming against you for seemingly no reason. People that are jealous of you, are angry, feel like, you know, you don't deserve the spotlight or you're not really that great or everyone else is hyping you up, but 
I don't, I see through you. I feel like you may feel like you get a lot of hostility, especially at the beginning of this journey. And again, the spirit is letting you know just to not worry about it. It's all going to work out in the end and you will be vindicated in the end. You are going to be proven right. And people are going to be humbled in the same way that again, Van Gogh back in the day, he may have felt pen and had others in the artist community look down on him and now he's got lines around the block to pe for people who want to see his exhibit his painting sell for hundreds of millions of dollars the most famous painting style in the world you know that's vindication and I feel like you guys are going to get that as well so are you going to reach success <laughs> I would definitely say yes on multiple levels, spiritual levels, Akashic record levels, astral plane levels, as well as physical, this earth levels when it comes to money and career success and notoriety. So yes, 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 across the board. That's what we have for you, Pile 4. I hope it resonates. If it does, let me know down in the comments. I always love hearing from you, hearing your thoughts, your stories, your insights. So let me know what you think. Also, make sure to um, subscribe. And if you want to see more of my content, head on over to Patreon. I just posted a reading all about what surprises are coming for you in 2024, as well as your innate gifts and talents. You guys might want to watch that one since I feel like you have a lot of gifts to choose from so that will tell you which ones to highlight and work on um, and also an 18 plus what are their late night thoughts of you that was also recently posted there's so much content on patreon over 75 exclusive readings you'll only get on patreon you also get early and ad free access to all my youtube videos they all get posted over on patreon first so if all that sounds good to you and you want to sign up go to the link underneath the timestamps in the comments and the description. And if you would like to get a private session with me, you can get that at my website, briarrosetarot.com. You can sign up for a tarot reading, astrology chart reading, uh, open channeling session, mediumship session, or a combination of all three. If you have a specific question, that's totally fine. Or if you want to just keep it open-ended and just kind of channel what wants to come through, channel messages for your life, we can do that as well. So if you're interested in a session with me, like I said, go to my website, briarrosetarot.com, and the link for that is in my description. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I am sending you so much love and light, and I'll be back again very soon with another reading. Take care, guys. Bye.